A Brahmin came to see the Buddha one time and said to him, There's nobody who's not afraid of death. And the Buddha said, Well, there are those who are afraid of death and those who are not. And he listed four reasons why people might be afraid of death. The first is that you're afraid that you're going to have to leave your body. And you're fearful about what that would mean, not having a body. The second is you're afraid you're going to be leaving the sensual pleasures of the human realm for fear that you would be deprived of pleasure. The third is that you know that you've done unskillful things in the past, may have been cruel, may have not just not helped people when you could have. And you're afraid there may be a punishment for that. And the fourth is that you haven't seen the real Dharma, or the true Dharma. In other words, you don't know what's followed by death. Annihilation? It's a big, big question mark. And those are the common reasons why people are afraid of death. The training we get is designed to get us past those reasons for being afraid. Because the Buddha actually points out there's another more valid reason to be afraid of death. Which is that we could be led on by our cravings at the moment of death. Which on the surface doesn't sound so bad if you crave something and you would like to go there. You think you wouldn't crave anything bad. But that really is ignorant of the nature of craving. Craving tends to be pretty blind. You may want something, but you don't think about the consequences of wanting that. And random cravings can come up in the mind, especially at the moment of death, when the body is very weak. You suddenly might remember somebody who wronged you horribly in the past. And a desire for revenge might come up just at that moment. Or there's a story they tell of King Ashoka, who at the moment of his death was really displeased with his treasurer. Ended up getting reborn as a snake next to the treasury. That's the real thing to fear, is where your cravings might lead you. But the training we get is also designed to get past that craving that cause of fear. So think in terms of the triple training, training in heightened virtue, heightened concentration, or actually heightened mind is the phrase in the Pali. But it basically means getting the mind in a good, strong concentration, and then heightened discernment. For instance, being afraid that you're going to leave the body. We practice concentration, and one of the topics of concentration is contemplation of the body, as we chanted just now. What is there in the body that's of any real essence? So you can think of the drawbacks of the body. But you would have to also have some experience with being aware of a state that's formless. Because otherwise you think about the drawbacks of the body, but you say, well, still, even with those drawbacks, how can I function without a body? How can I exist without a body? I'll put up with whatever the drawbacks are. But when you practice concentration, you get the mind into the formless states, infinitude of space, infinitude of consciousness, you realize that the, your awareness can still exist without having anything to do with the body at all. And those are very spacious states, wide open. So it inclines the mind to realize that maybe your awareness can exist without the body. That would be actually be a good thing. As for fear of missing out on human sensuality, here again you need an alternative pleasure. In this case it would be the pleasure of any of the jhanas. Get the mind focused on the breath. which doesn't count as a sensual pleasure. And you can get the breath really, really comfortable. There can be a strong sense of well-being. 
so you're less inclined to be concerned about missing the sensual pleasures of the human realm, because you've got something better, a non-sensual pleasure that has no drawbacks. Sensual pleasures blind you. Notice the Buddha's images for sensuality make clear. You're put in a position of danger. You're put in a position of debt when your happiness depends on sensual pleasures. Danger because there are people who will want what you've got. And the more sensual pleasures you're able to pile up, the more people will be jealous of what you've got and want to take it. As for the debt, you owe your pleasure to somebody else. And they can take it away at any time. So you're in a position of weakness. Whereas the pleasure that comes from concentration, that's yours. You're inhabiting your sense of the body as you feel it from within. And there's nobody going to come in and move in and try to inhabit the same place. So this is your territory. There's no debt. There's no danger. The little bit of danger there is is that you'd be stuck on this pleasure and not want to go for the higher pleasures of the noble attainments. But this is a much safer pleasure than the pleasure that comes from sensuality. So you work on this. As for fear of what might punishments might be waiting you, as the Buddha said, if you realize that you've been making mistakes, the best course is to resolve that you will not repeat those mistakes. You take the precepts, you develop thoughts of goodwill for yourself, for the people you've wronged, for everybody. And that can change your course. As one of his insights into the workings of karma is that it's not the case that everybody who does something wrong in this lifetime is going to have to be punished in the next lifetime. If you come to your senses and gain right view, and hold the right view all the way to the end, that can save you from a lot of grief. Of course, right view would entail that you would follow the precepts. So there you are, the triple training, training in virtue, training in concentration, and then training in discernment for that last fear, the fear that comes from not having seen the true Dharma. If you went up to somebody in the street and you know, said, are you afraid because you haven't seen the true Dharma, they wouldn't know what you're talking about. But if you did ask them, okay, do you know what's going to happen after death? And unless someone has gained the Dharma eye, they really don't know. There may be people who say, well, I believe so, so and so is going to save me, or I believe this particular belief, but it's just a belief. Real knowledge doesn't come until you've seen the deathless. And then you know that death is not the end. Because in the course of seeing the deathless, you step out of time. And in stepping out of time, you may not see the details of your previous lifetimes, but you do see that. It's been a long, long time that your many lifetimes have covered. So that's how you get past those four fears by a full training in the, the triple training. And ideally, it should get you some grounding in learning how to get past that final fear, the fear that you really should be afraid of, is what's going to happen to your cravings at the moment of death? Where are they going to take you? If you've had training in virtue, you've learned how to say no. You've learned some restraint. Same with concentration. You've learned that there are these good pleasures that can come simply by sitting here breathing, inhabiting the body as you feel it from within. So you learn to 
pry yourself loose from the sensual cravings that might pull you astray. And then if you develop discernment, then you can get past even the craving for becoming and craving for non-becoming. Because otherwise, as a passage we chant often says, we're a slave to craving. If you think about that passage in the canon where Venerable Ratnabal is talking to King Garavya, and he goes over facts of aging, illness, death, has the king reflect on those things. But then he asks them, if someone wanted to come from the east and say there's a kingdom to the east that you could conquer, would you go for it? Here the king is 80 years old. He's practically dying. And he knows he can't take anything with him. Yet he would say, yes, I'd go for it. Why not? How about a kingdom from the south? Sure. Kingdom from the west. Kingdom from the north. Kingdom on the other side of the ocean. Go for that too. This is the part of the mind that really is scary. Even with reflection and everything, you can still just fall into a state of craving. And it's like the wind that blows fires around. It can go in any direction. So that's what we really should be afraid of that we haven't got our cravings under control. So that's where we work again on the triple training. Work with your virtue, work with your concentration, and particularly work with your discernment. So when a craving comes up, you can ask yourself, is this something you really want to go with? Because ordinarily, the Buddha said, we take craving as our friend. Whatever it says, it's one of those friends that we believe implicitly. Whatever it says is sure, let's go along. It's one of the most important parts of the practice is learning how to step back from your cravings. The things that you really want to do and realize, okay, these are the cause of suffering. This is why it's good to contemplate those four noble truths again and again and again. And to see in action. And when craving comes up, there's going to be stress in the mind. And reflect on your cravings of the past to ask yourself how much you can really trust them. When you've worked on this, like, that's when you've worked on the real issue. And so you ask yourself, what are the things that can have an influence on your craving in, in a wrong direction? comes down to the five hindrances, sensuality, ill will, sloth and torpor. You get sleepy and you don't really know where your cravings are going to go. You just fall in with them. This is why the Buddha said that the important thing about preparing for death is that you learn how to be mindful and alert, even in the face of pain, even in the face of losing your body. You've got to maintain your mindfulness. You've got to maintain your alertness. Can't let yourself worry at that point. That's the other big issue. The stresses again and again. Don't be worried at the point of death. And try to get to that point in the practice where you have no more uncertainty about what the Buddha taught. You've seen for yourself there is a deathless. That's the point where you have no more fear about death as related to what's going to happen in the next lifetime. You may still have some fear about the pains that you're going to have to face leading up to death. But that's really minor when you can be sure that after death you're not going to fall. So the way to get past your fear of death and to really prepare for the real dangers, it's nothing mysterious. What the Buddha taught again and again and again, virtue, concentration, discernment, virtue, concentration, discernment. Just have a strong sense that this is the Dharma that you can take as your refuge. You don't need anything outside of this. This is your protection against those fears. 
and protection against the dangers that would otherwise await. So do your best to cultivate these three, these three trainings. Because they're really safe. <laughs>